Yeah, welcome to the Sunday Jam Show. They're quirky and maybe a little bit crude. Sex furniture in warehouses. These guys are sure to get you in the mood. I am joined on Skype today by the boys from the Penguin Party from Essex. Hi, guys. How are you? All right, mate. Thank okay. You. It's a uh, lovely day. Oh, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, do you want to introduce yourself? Who am I, um, who am I speaking to first? All right. Well, my name's Dave Milligan, and I'm the singer and songwriter and one of the guitarists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Jake Milligan, and I'm the other guitarist. Hi, Jake. I'm um, Gareth Hall, the bass player, and I do a little bit of announcing on the record. And I'm Dave, Dave McGrath, and I'm over in uh, West London, and I play the drums and samples. Hi, yes, guys. We like to keep him in West London. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, w- welcome to the Sunday Jam Show, and uh, thanks for joining me on the show today. Um, anyway, I'm going to get on with the first, very first question. How did you come up? This has to be said. How did you come up with the band name, The Penguin Party? Oh, I'll take this. Um, myself and my, my younger brother, when we were about um, six or seven, when I was about six or seven, yeah. um, my, my dad, in a desperate attempt to kind of butch us up a bit, kept, uh, he, was, he bought us action men, and uh, all we ever did with them was uh, make them cardboard guitars and amps and, yeah. and turn them into a little band, oh. much to his enormous annoyance. And, um, <laughs> and the name of the, the pretend band was, was the Penguin Party, which is, I, I, I had a trip to London when I was very small, and I remember walking across London Bridge during the rush hour with yeah. my mum, with all the commuters walking towards me mm-hmm. and you know when you get a lot of people very close together and they just kind of shuffle yes and yes. so they're all shuffling along in their suits and i remember as a kid thinking that they look like a bunch of penguins oh. and, and so the, the name of the penguin party was just to remind me that i, I didn't want to end up in a, in a, in a day job in a, a suit basically shuffling about like a penguin mm-hmm. ah. and then years and years later when uh, basically ever since then any any project i've done that's basically my own stuff i've, yeah. I've tagged it the penguin party but the I mean, ever since kind of 1983, um, I, did, I did a kind of tape album on my own. And in 1986, I did one with, with Dave McGraw, the drummer, yeah. when we first met. And then nothing happened for 25 years while we all had families and played in different bands. And yeah. then when we, when we started this band again, we thought we'd dig that name back up. Uh, thinking it? that nobody would ever hear it. It was supposed to be an in-joke for my little brother, but it's, it, we're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, how did, you all, um, how did you all kind of form the band? How did you all meet? Did you go to school with each other, you guys, or...? Uh, well, Jake, Jake, the guitarist, is my son. So, yeah. so we met when he was very young. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, and, uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but he's uh, he he came into it when basically the 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 band was me. Yeah, uh, I made made the first album, see through songs, sort of pretty much on my own with a, a, a contributions from Gareth and others, mm-hmm. and. Um, we st- I started getting gig offers through Reverb Nation and um, MySpace, oh, and cool. some quite nice ones, some nice little festival gigs and things. And I had no band. So I, I was phoning these people back saying, oh, we've just lost our drummer. You know, we'd love to do it, but we can't do it. You know, covering for the fact that there wasn't actually a band. Yeah. And, uh, and then we got the offer of um, playing at the International Pop Overthrow Festival in Liverpool at this time last year. Yeah. And I thought it was too good to miss, you know, playing at the Cavern and everything. Definitely. I didn't need a band in a hurry. Mm-hmm. So basically, um, Jake um, volunteered to, to sit in on, on second guitar. Yeah. And um, Gareth and Dave and myself go back. 20 odd years through various kind of drunken party bands yeah and uh, as you do we've spent a, yeah spent an awful lot of time sitting in pubs talking about the band we were going to eventually get, going to put together and i thought well this is this is obviously it what yeah. we're doing it have you, have you so now we uh, we have to actually get out of the pub occasionally <laughs> <laughs> and go and pick up guitars and things it's a bit of a nightmare really the pub the pub part of the band was it was the easy bit yeah, yeah we're very good at being a band that sits in a pub talking about being in a band. band yeah we're very good at that <laughs> and now, now we've kind of had a bigger band that occasionally has to go into rehearsals yeah, and play gigs badly encroaching into our drinking time actually. <laughs> 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 so how long have you uh, guys been gigging together as the penguin party then uh since this lineup since May last year for for um, international pop overthrow. Yeah, and we, we did um, two sets there, and then we did a show in Ealing about a month later. Okay. At, um, what was it called, Dave? The, the Ealing place. It was called Finnegan's Wake. Oh yeah, the it, Earwicker. It was a club called Earwicker, which oh, we, right. we we played at just in time for it to shut down. Yeah. And then we basically went to ground for six or seven months to record the album. Yeah. Um, but this album's been recorded as the band, so. So it's got a more of a band feel and you know, that kind of thing. And then we basically had to get back together and start rehearsing again to learn 
learn the songs that we wrote as a band. Yeah. So we haven't really gigged since since kind of June or July of last year. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, thanks for reminding us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <How> <laughs> the <laughs> incredible nerves. <laughs> so, we're, so we're doing IPO again this year. We're at Liverpool again this year, and then we're Brilliant. in um, London the week after. Brilliant stuff. And then we're going to get stuck into gigging more often. So, so we're not a regular gigging band yet, but we'll be there. So, uh, so basically, you guys have been spending a lot of time in the studio. How do you find the studio work? Do you um, have a good laugh with it all, or does it sometimes get a little bit intense? Or uh, it, no, it's 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 great. You know, we we have yeah. a lovely time. We 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 put all our stuff down. Yeah, me and Dave, the drummer, put our stuff down, and then uh, <clears throat> Dave, the guitarist, changes it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, edited it with an, to win an inch of its life. You get, yeah, occasionally you get tracks but, back and you go, oh, God, I'm good. I don't remember playing that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, I can just tell that you guys have so much fun, you know, you, you gel so well, I can tell, you know, all on Skype and having a good laugh, this sunshine's um, just beaming down on us, you can't go wrong uh-huh. it really, can you? Anyway, is this the um, the album that you've been uh, recording in the studio? This is Sex Furniture in Warehouses, um, is it, and other stories, is that right? Sex Furniture Warehouse and other stories, yeah. 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 It's, um, Garrett, Garrett, tell them, tell them why it's called that. There's a great thing, because we're from Essex, yeah. and all you have to do is take the ENS off, and it says sex. Oh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we were, we were in one of our guitar shops, uh, which we go to, because there's a nice girl that works there. <laughs> and, um, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were walking out, and over the, over the road, there yeah. was just, it was, should have been Essex Furniture Warehouse. Yeah. And it wasn't, it just said Sex Furniture Warehouse. I took a picture of it on my phone. Yeah kept it for a bit and we just went that's it that's what we're going to call the album what a great name for the album yeah and, yeah. Th- and that's how it happened it was just pure <laughs> kind of you know these things happen sometimes i think it was meant to happen yeah it's know. just a good job we weren't obviously the canal museum yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a bummer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the second album title sorted out right yeah. now yeah. But, um, yeah and once once we had that name we kind of kind of worked towards that you know that, that kind of uh, it was called Sex Furniture Warehouse a working title for, yeah. for six months Yeah. and um, as the songs came together they they, they seemed, I spent a lot of time on trains I spent four hours a day commuting in and out of London cool. and um, I kind of amused myself by, by kind of watching people on the trains and wondering what they what their stories are you know I mean most, most yeah. people you know kind of blend into the background but every now and again you get, and and again, you get some real character Yeah. and I found myself kind of backfilling their stories or writing little phrases about them in the phone um, oh. When I ended up with basically eleven songs that are about Essex characters, yeah, that was it. We thought, well, Sex Furniture Warehouse and other stories, ah. um, and especially when we decided to use it, the, the, the CD comes in a paperback book rather yeah. than rather than a CD case, um, like a little poetry book thing with all the sleeve notes and whatnot. Very cool. Um, so that was that. You know, the stories thing again ties up with that. Just trying to make it a bit more bookish. Oh. <laughs> Oh, very interesting. I must admit, when you see some people on the train, you can kind of read them like a book almost, can't you? Some people are just that characteristic. You think, yeah, I can actually write a story or maybe even a song about you. And that's, uh, that's incredible that you guys have, have taken that kind of um, almost information and used it as your, uh, as your songs. That's, that's brilliant, really. I, well, I live in fear of, especially when we start, because we haven't gigged down in Essex yet, we only gigged down in London and Liverpool, yeah. but we will eventually obviously start gigging around here. Sure. And I'm, I'm living in fear of, of somebody oh, walking up to me in a gig and going, that song's about me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's all untrue. <laughs> there's there's a, song, a song on the album called She Was Only a Roofer's Daughter. Yeah. And um, that was two things tied together. There was, a, there was a girl on the tube opposite me, who she was about four foot two, a little tiny little, little young woman. Little petite and, thing. Um, Dressed very, very eccentrically, very yeah. flamboyant, odd colours. The sort, you know, the sort of person that you, you imagine probably has quite a lot of cats, and, yeah. and you know, it's slightly crazy. And um, <laughs> and she had these enormous um, high heel court shoes. <clears throat> they, were, they must have been size ten, size eleven shoes. Yeah. And her feet were right down the front of them. I remember looking at her and thinking, <laughs> yeah, she's got her mum's shoes on like a little kid. And I thought, actually, that must be her dad's shoes. They're so big. <laughs> So that so that went in the phone as you know, there she sits four foot six in her transvestite father's shoes. Yeah. And and that's the kind of start of the story right there. And it kind of sat there for six months and then, then Gareth Hall takes over the story. And then um <coughs> an ex girlfriend was getting a bit of a roof done. Yeah. And uh her friend uh we'll say Vivian, it's not actually his real name. <laughs> but uh but Vivian came up to, to survey the roof yeah. and Vivian turned up as a woman. And <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And he, was, and it, it, he, he, he was he was a transvestite roofer, and he turned up, and it was just it was brilliant. He was such a nice guy. And there was this wonderful bit. He, I was at some point he was looking at the roof. I'd gone up there, and he was complaining about this and this and this. Yeah. And he just turned around to me and just oh, just ignore me. I'm just a grumpy transvestite roofer. 
But uh, up to that point, nobody had mentioned it. Everybody was being terribly middle class. <laughs> we never said, you know, we'd be, we'd be that total middle class. It wasn't kind of like, oh, yes, you appear to be dressed like a woman. It was just, hi, yeah. come in. Same <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so yeah. way, obviously. Uh, total the whole thing, you know. It just, yeah. just completely ignored the fact that he was dressed as a woman. But a lovely guy, nice roofer too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when Gareth told me about him, I was like, that's where the girl got her shoes from. So I kind of paired them up into a little one pair of family. And, you know, so, so I keep nearly saying his real name, but um, Vivian... And this girl I saw on the tube became this this one parent family, and, yeah. and my idea that she was dressed as she was because she was, yeah, she idolises her father like most daughters do. Of I hope. course, and um, and so she was dressing like him. So you, you end up with a sort of teenage girl who's dressing like a sort of forty five year old transvestite roofer. <laughs> 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 These two people presumably have never met, but they're, they're now. They're now related in song. <laughs> Do you know what? It's funny you're going on about this, because this was actually one of my questions. I, I'm, te- I'm guessing that you've uh, been asked that question before in uh, radio interviews, have you? Or um, we certainly, uh, there's a chap called Danny Scott who interviewed yeah. us for, for the, um, the uh, forward in the book. And uh, yeah, he was very into that, because he's a writer himself. He was very in- into where the, where, the, where the characters come from. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't write about myself, because I've, you know, I've been with the same very nice lady for 25 years you know yeah. a couple of very nice kids and you know there's, there's you. nothing particularly dramatic going on in my life so you know i would be be faking it if i wrote songs about you know cars and girls and you know my baby done left me kind of stuff yeah, yeah writes, you write some about me yeah i mostly write them about <laughs> gary's sex girlfriends and, and <laughs> <laughs> i live vicariously through gary i would live vicariously through jake but i don't really know what he want to know when he gets up yeah, to you. i don't think you want to <laughs> yeah. So go, going on to the uh, kind of style of your music, what genre of music would you put yourselves in if you were to put yourselves in a genre? Chord oh, yeah, Tricky well, question. Um, what, I, don't, oh, um, I like to think of it as sort of, it's kind of classic, classic guitar pop. Yeah. So you cut out the kind of squeeze and, and kind of kinks and, and, yeah, even up to the point where, where at the risk of mentioning the B word, you know, the sort of Britpop era with the yeah. blur and whatnot, where, where, you know, songs started from the from the lyric and the hook yeah. and you hang a load of guitars all over them and, and uh so you sort of see where you end up but it, it, that was it really it was it was i wanted proper songs and proper tunes yeah and you know i've been on quite a few bands over the years where you know we started writing from the bass line or a drum loop or whatever and you end up with some great pieces of music but you don't necessarily end up with with songs no so it's, it's the songs first and foremost if jake had his way he would be heavier i think because he's he, he plays in an excellent heavy rock band called curbside hotel nice and um you know, we have, we have a tendency, we have to sneak over to his pedal board during rehearsals sometimes and, and switch off the kind of super saturated wall of Marshall stuff. <laughs> <Make him gentle. laughs> so, so when it comes to kind of categorising your genre of music, you'd, you'd kind of say more the kind of Britpop kind of genre, would you? Or, or would? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I try not to say Britpop because, be, no. because it, a whole bunch of people kind of run screaming from the room if you say Britpop. But yeah, yeah. If you think of it as... That's kind of, yeah, classic guitar pop. Yes. I'd even go as far as saying 80s-style classic guitar pop, which is basically Britpop under another name, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, but, uh, we've had, I mean, people have said Squeeze and Crowded House. Kirsty McCall came up, which is quite funny. Oh. Somebody said, my, my wife actually said it, we sound like Kirsty McCall if, if, if she'd have been a bloke. Oh, right. I'm not, I'm not sure how she'd feel about that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I must say, guys, you have a, a very, very original um, sound, don't you? I mean, I, I've never heard anything quite similar, really. Very nice of you to say so. Thank you very much. I'll put it down to the rhythm section. Yeah, you would. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, you still um, there, Dave? You nodded off. No, I'm still here. Yeah, you there? You there? (laughs) Right. Okay. Get a word in. Oh, bless you.